Shall I start, Lance, or would you like to uh, to begin? Go ahead. All right. So uh, here's the deal, everybody. I watched the footage, okay? And, uh, you know, many times I, uh, you know, something's coming. It's my job to analyze, predict, whatever, okay? And a lot of times, you know, something will, uh, I'll make some prediction or something like that. And, uh, and sometimes I'm like, wow, you know, I was not expecting that, but that is actually better than I expected, okay? And then there are other times where I make some predictions, I make some whatever, and then uh, the thing happens and I'm like, uh, that's exactly what I was thinking going in. And this is what I thought about last night. I honestly have absolutely no idea why they aired that footage. I cannot for the life of me figure it out. Because the thing is, CM Punk had his side of the story that he gave on Ariel Helwani's show. And apparently Tony was furious and decided that he was going to air the footage. Okay? So, knowing that... You know, I, I figured, okay, well, in some way, this footage has to make, you know, CM Punk look very bad. And it was the footage that got him fired, by the way. And so uh, I had the other question, though, which is the people that are showing this footage in storyline are going to be the Young Bucks, their heels. And, you know, this involves Jack Perry, who is currently working as a heel and he's got this big shirt that says scapegoat on it. And then also, like, how's it going to be handled, this whole deal where uh, Tony Khan said that he felt like his life was in danger? These are the things that we're going to have to figure out when they when they air this footage. Now, the one thing, I will say they did this because I didn't know how they were going to do this. I was, I was baffled when I was told that this was going to play into a storyline leading to the pay-per-view. I thought, how? Okay. Now, whether you like how they did it or not, the fact is they did try... And the storyline was the Young Bucks were getting ready for their match with FTR at Wembley. This incident happened in the back before the match. They had to put on their EVP caps, go handle the situation. They were totally out of wrestler mode. They got it all handled, and then they had to go to the ring all flustered or whatever, and they lost to FTR. And this time, that's not going to happen. That's the story they told. Okay, fine. They 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 tried to do something to turn it into a, a pay-per-view angle. But... It was obvious watching the video that CM Punk was the aggressor, okay? Jack Perry did not aggressively approach him. CM Punk went right up to the guy, and they had a long conversation. And, like, there's all these other people around, and I don't know what was said in the confrontation, but, like, all the people surrounding them, I mean, you know, they, they clearly heard that something was going on, but they didn't appear like, oh, my God, we got to break this up before it escalates. Just, you know... They had some sort of confrontation. We have no idea what they said because there was no audio. And then, uh, you know, whatever Jack Perry said, whether it's what are you going to do about it or, or whatever, you know, punk, boom, shoved him once, boom, shoved him twice. Jack Perry comes forward, punk grabs his head. Was it a choke? Was it a front face lock? We don't know because we couldn't see it. And then, uh, you know, there was no moment where, you know, Samoa Joe politely asked Punk to let go and Punk let go. Joe rushed in there and, man, he tore these dudes apart. The entire thing from the first shove to them being torn apart was less than six seconds. The actual front headlock choke, whatever it was, less than four seconds. I mean, it was boom, immediately broken up. In the melee, some monitors, you know, we heard that monitors went flying. They didn't go flying, but there were monitors that were knocked around and people were trying to fix the monitors. Punk's, you know, rear end banged into them and they started falling all over the place. And then when they were broken up, you know, you could you could see, I think, Tony Khan's hand and like part of his face trying to get him away from the monitors. And then Chris Hero comes from behind the monitors to help break them up. And boy, did that guy look miserable. And then, uh, and then Punk does, you know, go straight towards Tony Khan... And, uh, and Chris Hero got between him and Tony Khan. And, uh, and Punk was not getting past uh, Chris Hero. And then he was dragged away, and, and away they went. And when it was over, I mean, I thought, you know, this, this, you know, Punk did look somewhat crazed, 
but you know he was immediately held back i don't know how uh tony felt that his life was in danger so having seen that i don't know why he heard the footage and then number two it's like jack perry whatever he said verbally physically he did not do anything he did not do anything. He did not go after CM Punk. He did not, like, he was attacked in this segment. And, you know, having watched the video and knowing that, a dude's been gone for seven months. Seven months he has been gone because of this. And, you know, when the Young Bucks are there and Matt's got his scapegoat shirt on, it's like, yeah, a guy comes up as a scapegoat. Are you supposed to be a heel? They've already apparently completely sold out of scapegoat t-shirts. So, like, how this is making him a heel, I have no earthly idea. You know, the Young Bucks ran in, and uh, they got CM Punk chants, which, my God, if that's going to be a thing in AEW where every week we have to see, hear CM Punk chants, I mean, that's, to me, a disaster. And, uh, you know, that's kind of my my thoughts on everything. I, I They spent all this time angry at somebody in wwe they went immediately to will osprey cutting a promo on triple h as a viewer i'm sitting there for 20 minutes watching tony khan get what he feels is his revenge on wwe on an aw show and i am just begging for them to move on so i guess before we talk more lance your thoughts on what we saw last night I didn't mind it as much as you did. I think because I looked at it more as I'm just a wrestling viewer. Like, I haven't followed as much of the backstage BS as you have. So it's like, it ended up being far better than I expected. I expected it to be pretty bad. But it's like, it came off like the Young Bucks coming up with a lame excuse on why they lost their match. And I thought Matt saying we're going to air the footage but you know it's really just like some high school garbage and it really isn't much which i thought was good to downplay it because it did come off as very high school one guy shoved the other guy one guy charged at him to take him down and they were broken up it's like yeah that's the level of fight you see in high school because i've seen far better backstage fights than this one so it was just uh they showed some footage that really didn't amount to anything Tried to turn it into an angle. Now, I do think a good quality video package would have made me more interested in the Bucks FTR match, but it wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. You say Jungle Boy is a heel. He may be in New Japan, but he hasn't been established that in AEW. I think he's got to come back as a babyface because he came off like a scapegoat. It's like this guy was gone for that. It's like he was fixing his hair. A guy shoved him. He tried to take him down. The takedown got stuffed, probably partially because Punk hit the desk, and it was broken up. It's like, I've seen way worse. All right, we'll talk about this more after the break. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi not here today. Lance is joining us. And uh, during the break, there were some comments in the chat, so I'll address a few of those. Uh, First off... Yeah, I mean, like I said, as far as, like, turning it into a storyline, I mean, I don't know if they could have done anything better because I couldn't conceive of anything working. But the Young Bucks using that as a heel excuse for why they lost, they were busy dealing with something else because they are EVPs. And and then, uh, you know, Dax and Cash coming out, they're doing their promo, about, can we get over this and everything? I mean, it was it was, I think, the best they could have done. So I don't really have anything... Listen, if they decided they were going to show it, then I don't have a problem with what they ended up doing with it, okay? Now, the other thing is, uh, well, what, what what is going on with Jack Perry? And, you know, people have mentioned he, he's not actually suspended right now, which is which is the case, okay? So we talked about this a while ago. What happened with Jack is that the thing happened, and then they, you know, he got sent home. And this was in like late August, early September. I forget when the show was. I think the very end of August. But uh, he just, uh, you know, I I, I believe no communication whatsoever. It's the same thing in all of these suspensions. When when something happens, there's an investigation. There's like no communication whatsoever. And so he was gone. 
And uh, he would have been suspended for at least two months because there was no discussion of bringing him back until November. And around November, there was an idea in motion to bring him back. But CM Punk showed up at Survivor Series and Tony scrapped the idea. Now, why? I don't know, but he did. As soon as CM Punk came back to WWE, he scrapped the idea of the return of, of Jungle Boy. So, uh, which, by the way, if the reason is he wanted to avoid CM Punk chants, that's quite ironic today. But anyway, so uh, he, you know, no plans for return. And that's when, uh, you know, Jack and, and uh, Rocky Romero and Tony Khan, it's not supposed to be like a shoot, but uh, they eventually all got together and set up Jack's run in New Japan because the fact is Tony wasn't planning on using him. So he wasn't suspended the entire time, but until very recently, uh, there have been no plans to bring him back. Now, obviously, uh, probably in the last you know two three weeks, you can see things that Jack has been doing. You can see things that Young Buck is Young Bucks have been doing. You saw this whole thing there. I mean, my guess is I know you think otherwise, Lance, but I think that Jack Perry is returning at the pay per view, and he's going to help screw FTR. Young Bucks are going to win the tag team titles, and they will be a heel trio. That's where I think they're going here. But uh, that is the update on what's going on with Jack Perry and his uh, his status with AEW. All right. I, I would rather see him uh, be the third to FTR because he's a scapegoat because the office treated him poorly, and the Bucks are the office. And they already have Okada for their trio. Um, they don't need another one. I suppose it's possible he could return. And, uh, you know, the Bucks think he's going to be uh, helping them, and then he helps FTR. You could you could definitely do that. But, uh, but we shall see. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.